Hey everyone, today I have something really interesting to share with you, which is how to create a Prezi transition effect in PowerPoint. Now, PowerPoint and Prezi are very separate platforms that are both used for presentations. PowerPoint leverages the concept of a slide deck transitioning sequentially forward and backwards in a series of slides. Many of you are familiar with Prezi, and Prezi uses the concept of a canvas that you can zoom in on certain sections and zoom out. And so we're going to create that effect in PowerPoint. Now, normally I like to show you an example of the interaction before we get into it. But in this case, I'm going to take a look behind the scenes before I show you the final product. And so this is a very simplistic presentation, but it's just a chance for me to show you the basic functionality and conceptual framework of this PowerPoint. So what I have is a title slide, and this title slide has a few different elements, similar to how you might see a Prezi screen with maybe a step ladder or some kind of diagram, and you can zoom in on certain parts of that diagram. What I did here is I drew some basic shapes to connect the different sections that I will be zooming in on. Now let's hop over here to the side. You can see I have section one, which has a blue dot, and then it has some blue images. And then I have section two with a red dot and some red images and same for section three with some green elements. So what you're seeing on this main slide here is actually a thumbnail of the different slides from the different sections, the first slide in each section. I inserted a zoom and then I chose section zoom. When you select that, you have the option to choose the first slide from each section. And so that's what I did. And then on the zoom ribbon, I just went and removed the backgrounds. And that's why you can see this element come up right underneath the shape that's on the slide. Now for the first slide in each section, I went to the transitions and I had it advance the slide automatically after zero seconds. And so when you select on an element on here, it jumps to the section, but then it jumps right to the content slides. And then I can cycle through the content slides and return to the main slide. So I think we're ready to see the example of this in action. Here is the main slide, and when I click on one of the elements, it jumps here, and then I can advance sequentially. I have these transitioning one to another. When I'm done with this section, it'll take me back out to the main slide. And same here, I can cycle through. In this case, I use the morph transition effect, and then we can hop back out. So let's delete these sections and start from scratch. It's not entirely from scratch. I'll leave this element on the screen. You can draw something different if you want, or you can shape this if you want it to be slightly different than what I have. You know, I can reorder these if I'd like. Now you can see on the thumbnail pane, I still have the sections here. I just don't have the slides. To add a new section, what I do is right click somewhere and I would click add section and then you can title the section name if you'd like. So I have three sections. I'm gonna click underneath section one, right click, and I'm gonna add a new slide. And then what I'll do is I'll insert, and I'm going to insert a shape, and I'm just gonna put a circle, like how I had before. In this case, it's a blue circle. I could even rename this section if I wanted to, and I can call it the blue section. I'm gonna duplicate that slide and move it into section two and then I'll change it to red. And if I wanted, I could rename this to the red section. Duplicate it once more, and I'll put it into section three, change it to green, and I'll call this the green section. Naming the sections is really for your own benefit. It doesn't affect the presentation, really. Now what I want to do is insert a new slide. I'm just gonna insert a blank slide I'm gonna go into insert to shapes and I'm gonna choose a stock image. And for this example, I'm gonna look for blue images. So for the stock image, I'm gonna look for all things blue and I'll go ahead and select three blue things. So I have three images on my slide. I'm gonna duplicate this two times and then I'll just delete some of the elements. I'm gonna zoom out and reshape this. I want it to take the entire slide now one thing I could do is go up to Design Ideas, open this tab, and it usually has an option to make it full screen, and that's what I'll do. And then I'll do that for these other ones as well. 
So now I have a blue section. I'm going to go up to the slide and go up to transitions and I want it to transition automatically after zero seconds. And one thing I think I'll do, I'm going to go up to the selection pane and this picture, I'm going to name it two exclamation points and I'll call it blue. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to rename the other pictures the exact same name. So PowerPoint is going to treat this picture, all three of these pictures, as if they're the same picture, which is important because if I highlight these last two slides and go up to transition, it allows me to apply something of a morph effect. And so it'll transition one image seamlessly into the other image. And then when I'm done with the section, it'll take me back up to the default section. So I'm gonna repeat this process and I'm gonna create slides for the red and the green sections. Okay, now I have three sections. I have a blue section with some blue images, red and green. And I'm gonna go back up to the title slide. I'm gonna insert, I'm looking for zoom and I'm going to insert a section zoom. That'll put the first slide on each of the sections. And if I have multiple sections, I can choose which sections I want. In this case, I just want to choose every section. And so I'll insert those. You can place them wherever you want on the slide. And then you can see that it inserts an entire thumbnail of the slide. In this case, it's a white background with a colored dot. When I click on the thumbnails for the slides, I have options here. For one, I'm going to delete the zoom background for each of these. And then you can see that my shape elements go right underneath the element, the circle element from the slides. Another option you can see is that for the blue section, for example, the blue section comprises slides two, three, four, and five. And I can see that this section is slides two through five, and then it will return. There's an arrow there saying that when you're done with slide five and you advance forward, it's actually going to return right back to this title slide. And the option for that is up in the corner. You have return to zoom. If I unselect that, and then I click on the blue slide, it'll take me to slides two through five. When I advance it, it'll take me to slide six, which is the title slide for the red section. So if I want to ensure that after I go through the slides in the section that it returns back, then I just need to hit return to zoom. So let's test this out and see what we have. Here I'll click on the zoom section. It takes me right to the zoom slide and I can advance through. You can see that morph effect and when I'm finished it'll morph right back to the initial slide. Now you can see here there's, an, there's a mistake in that it takes me from the green slide and you can see this element before it gets to the regular slide. And I'm glad I made that mistake so that I can show you what happened. What I have is when I selected the slides for the transitions, if you can see the morph transition is applied to slide 13, which means when I transition from 12 to 13, it'll transition from spinach to apple. Likewise for slide 12, I have a morph, but 11, it looks like I also have a morph and I don't want it to morph from the green circle to the green fields. What I want to do is fade it. So let's go back and test that with that change. I can click on the green circle. Another change I need to make actually is I want it to advance automatically and I'm noticing that it's not doing that. So let me do that for the red and the green. Blue is already set up. So now let's look at it. I'm going to go to green and it automatically transitions into this slide and it holds there until I advance it and then it'll morph into the spinach and then to the apple, and then it will return. Let's do that once more with the red slide. You can see those morph effects, and then we'll return back to the main slide. This is very much the concept of how Prezi works, where you can zoom into an area on the main canvas and then zoom back out. And so although I'm dealing with a slide deck and I'm dealing with slides that conceptually are sequential, the zoom section capabilities allow me to apply a more multimedia interactive element to PowerPoint that mimics what Prezi is able to provide us. 
so I strongly encourage you to go explore the section zoom functionality.